Hey, good morning. It's Kayak Cliff. It's December and I'm in beautiful Dunedin, Florida. I'm on the Dunedin Causeway and that's Caledesi Island back behind me. We're going to get out on the water and do some paddling, but this is a review of a kayak that you've seen in a couple adventure videos that I've done already. It's called the Pakayak. Now, what is Pakayak? Well, it's a kayak. It's a 42 inch high stack. And do you know those Russian dolls that you can get where they stack on top of each other and before you know it, you got nine dolls all stacked together in a nice little unit like this? Well, that's what the Pakayak is. It's six pieces of high density polyethylene plastic that breaks down into six pieces and nests and stacks together like a Russian doll. And what you have is a, a 42 inch high stack that can go into any SUV, any hatchback, trunks, trucks. When you're done with it, you can put it in a bedroom, you can put it in your garage, you can put it, you can put it anywhere. It doesn't take up any space. And because there's wheels on this bag, you can wheel it into an airport and put it on a plane and take it to your favorite destination. So we're going to take apart this kayak, put it together, talk about the key attributes, then we're going to get it on the water and we're going to take you on the water on a real life adventure where we're talking about all the things this kayak has to offer. And believe me, it's a lot. So let's get on with the Pakayak. Now when the Pakayak comes to you, it comes to you just like this, but it's in a box. So this is the kayak minus the box. So kind of think of it as an unboxing video. Um, I've had this out on a lot of adventures. I probably have 40 miles on this kayak uh, over probably eight different paddles. So I've learned a lot about this kayak. I was out yesterday in salt water, so I'm gonna open it up. It'll be a little bit sandy. Today, I'm gonna rinse it off and clean it off and get it ready for the trip back to Texas. But you have two buckles here, and then there's a zipper. Zipper comes down, up and around. Boom, there's the Packy Yak. And just like I mentioned, there's piece of seaweed from yesterday. It comes in four colors. This is the habanero orange. They have the chili red. I think the uh, owners of, or the developers of this kayak, I think they like spicy food, <laughs> but they're, they're rightfully named that with the colors. Uh, there's also a surf, which is like an aquamarine or a sea mist type color. And then there's a sunshine yellow. So four great colors to choose from. Okay, I'm gonna put this kayak together for you and then we're gonna get it out on the water. But it comes with a towel. Now, why would Pakayak send you a towel? Well, you have a cool towel to dry yourself off with, of course. But this is a key part of the installation of the kayak. We put this on the sandy beach or whatever you're installing it on just to keep the kayak clean, all of the little gasketed uh, parts of the kayak. We don't wanna get scratched up and get sand in them and things like that. Um, so we take care of it and we use something to put it on. <clears throat> so basically, we just start unstacking the kayak. So I'm gonna do that and put it together for you. What we're gonna do is we're gonna build two different stacks, which are gonna be three pieces on this side and three pieces on this side. Then we're gonna lay those down on the ground, bring them together, connect them, and boom, we got a full kayak. So take a look at this.
Now what we have left is a stern section for this side and a bow piece for this side. So let's get those on. And these pieces all clamp on just like the rest of the parts. You can see here on the bow piece, we have one, two, three clamps. And I'm gonna put this up on top. Now what, I what else I wanna talk about is the quality that they have here. These are clamps that are impossible to come undone when you're out there paddling because they have a little they have a little lever that you have to hit like this when you're ready to take it apart you you basically it'll be like this you'll depress this lever and that allows you to un unclamp the boat so they're never going to come apart it's all stainless steel but what they've done is they've done an excellent job at you can see where this you know every six pieces has this returned edge that returns in and it's all plastic, but they haven't taken this hardware and just screwed it into plastic. Basically, they've taken the hardware and then they have backed it behind the plastic. They've put a backer, a metal backer, and the stainless steel screw is going through this metal piece, through the plastic, and also through the metal backer. So these, they're never coming loose. It's extremely high quality. I'm really impressed with it. Now, when you return with your kayak and you need to put it back in the bag, super easy. Uh, what they've done is this bag has little receivers built into it. And this is where your bow section stacks and then the stern stacks on top of it. And then the all remaining four pieces stack on top of it like, like Russian dolls like I was talking to you about. So they go right back in the bag. The bag has wheels and they're small wheels for hard surfaces but uh, like you know if you're at the beach or you're going to go over uneven surfaces or real rough surfaces they have real big wheels that you can get for the bag as well separately you just order those from Pacayac. Now we have the two stacks of Pacayac. now we got to take them lay them down and join them together and that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're still we're still going to do it on the towel. We're going to where the joining pieces come together. That's going to be over the towel, and then we're going to clamp it together with five clamps. Now the boat weighs 58 pounds, which is not unlike any other 14 foot touring kayak that is just one piece plastic. Um, you're going to add a few extra pounds. Uh, but um, it's not unlike any other uh, high-density polyethylene plastic touring kayak. And again, this is a 14-foot-2 model. Now, to level out the kayak so it clicks to better, so they come up and marry together better, I need to lift up the stern a little bit. So I'm going to lift up the stern by putting this, um, the seat underneath the stern to kind of elevate it a little bit so I can slide them together better. But while we're talking about the seat, I'm really impressed with the seat. It's a, it's a contoured uh, memory foam. And uh, you know, my, I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the comfort of it. It's, um, you know, after, a year, after an hour and a half, my, my butt gets numb in any kayak. So um, I have found it to be a little bit less with this because it's a memory foam that actually gives. And I'm really, you know, I'm really, you know, impressed by the quality of this. But anyway, I'm gonna use it now for a different purpose and that's to elevate the stern of the kayak. You have um, uh, two um, integrated plastic, kind of like dowels that are built into the hull of the stern or back section of the kayak. And that's gonna go inside two holes right here to align it. And uh, I'll do that, bring it together. And I clamp the first three down on the bottom. And then I make sure it's all aligned on the top still, and I have two clamps on either side on the top. Now, 
Now, <clears throat> now you also have a pad that goes over the clamps, and this comes pre-attached on the kayak, so it's it doesn't need to come off unless you want it to. I just tend to you know do it this way, but I lay this on, and this is meant to cover the clamps, and then you have a drink holder, two uh, bungee straps for it to act as a drink holder right here. But these are, you know, your legs lay over that and it makes it really comfortable. Okay, uh, next is the seat. And the seat just lays in and you can adjust how far the seat is uh, forward or backwards, uh, depending on your height. You can, you know, do some minor adjustments to it. But it just clamps on to buckles that are already there to receive it. And for you, it might make more sense for it to be slid up all the way. For me, I'm six foot tall with a 34 and a quarter inseam, so I bring it back farther. And then again, I put, put the floor pad across and I'm done. That's the kayak right there. Now every good touring kayak needs a good backrest. And uh, that's what this is right here. You know, it, it, it'll tend to flop down just like in any touring kayak. This moves around to move with your body. Um, but this is all held into place with bungee cords on the back and straps that go up to the forward. And you can adjust it forward or backward by how you tension the straps. So all in all, this gives you very good back support. And like I mentioned before, the memory foam contoured seat is, is really, it's very comfortable. Now there are there are adjustable foot pegs in the kayak and you can adjust these forward or backwards to suit whatever height you have um, Up here is a sealed bulkhead and back behind is a sealed bulkhead and um, This kayak is good for paddlers up to six foot two six foot three but really it depends on the inseam and uh, it's about a 34 to 34 and a half inch seam. Inseam is the maximum. I have a 34 and a quarter inseam. I'm only six foot tall, but I have very long legs compared to most. Um, now you have six foot four people that only have a 32 inch inseam or six foot two people. So as long as your inseam isn't much over 34 or 34 and a quarter inches, you're fine in this boat. My feet actually go up against the bulkhead. And uh, this is just one piece plastic that's molded into the hull, so it's never going to come loose. There's no gasketing or anything here. It's just part of the boat. Now, since we're talking about bulkheads, um, that's a real important thing on this boat. Now, all touring kayaks, they're going to have a foam, uh, foam bulkhead that, that seals forward of your feet and behind your back. It seals the cockpit from the sealed front portion of the boat or bow and the sealed uh, stern or rear portion of the boat. And why is that important? Well, you want the, um, the bow and the stern to be buoyant. So if you ever fill up the cockpit with water, the foam keeps the water from getting to the sealed forward and backward portions of the boat. So you have flotation and that's extremely important. <clears throat> the only thing in most touring kayaks the foam degrades and wears out over time. The caulk comes out. It's, it's, it's not the best design in my opinion, um, but it does work great. One thing I like about the Packet Yak is the, the front bulkhead and the back bulkhead that separate the sealed front compartment and the sealed rear compartment. It's all molded into the hull. It's, the, it's, it's part of the hull, so it's just one piece plastic. So. Nothing will ever degrade. No bulkhead will ever come uncaulked and fall apart and you have to replace it or anything like that. It's all 100% sealed and no water can ever get from the cockpit up to the front, the bow, or the stern, the rear of the boat. I think that's, that's an unbelievable design that they put into this boat, both for safety and for long-term uh, durability and longevity. Now the boat is fully assembled and ready to hit the water. But let's talk about a couple of the other features here. It does have the sealed uh, front compartment, a uh, nice, very pliable rubber um, Tupperware type fit. It has, uh, um, it has reflective uh, grab lines, and these are reflective if light hits them. They, they radiate 
uh, you know, reflection like reflectors on a bicycle. Has uh, secure grab handles uh, forward and back or stern and bow of the boat. And it has bungee deck lines for organizing your gear forward of the cockpit and rear of the cockpit. And then again, you have grab lines back in the back as well. Now the Bluefin 142, which is what this model is, um, it's 14 feet, two inches. It's high density polyethylene, um, super durable. It is rudder ready. If you wanna put a rudder on it, uh, here's where your cables will come out and your rudder will nest right here when you fold it up. So it is rudder ready for those of, the, those of you that would like a rudder, but I have found it tracks beautifully and I don't see any need for a rudder, you know, for my purposes. Now, now Pacquiac has a leak proof guarantee <clears throat> where the where these uh, the six sections join together with the gaskets and the clamp uh, stainless steel clamps. Um, they're not going to leak. I have not found any leaks uh, in any of my kayak adventures. Um, the uh, watertight hatch covers, they're also very watertight. Yesterday I was taking some really good chop over the top of the bow of the kayak and everything stayed perfectly dry inside. So I was really impressed with this. But um, again, Pack a Yak on their website, they have a leak proof guarantee. You're not gonna get leaks where this joins together or you know, I have found the, um, the bow and the hatch covers, uh, both rear and you know, bow and stern to be extre extremely dry. Okay, let's get this boat out on the water. Huh. The unfortunate thing is much of my videos are in fresh water and you don't have tides to contend with. And uh, uh, when I had planned on shooting this video, <laughs> uh, the tide was low, but whatever. It's, it's already an incoming tide, so the tide will be up a lot higher uh, when I get back. But we're going to go out here in the St. Joseph Sound here in Dunedin, Clearwater area. Paddle over to Caladesi Island, which is rated the number one or number two beach in the in America or the world. It, it's an island. You can only get there by boat, but there's shuttles and things like that. But uh, I'll talk about some of the stuff around here as we're finishing the review up on the water because uh, I like to, when I review, I just don't want to sit there on the shore and talk about a product. I want to get it out and use it like I've been doing for the past two months, like with the 40 miles I have on this kayak already. So anyway, it's it's hearkening us it's ready to go let's get uh, habanero out on the water now before getting in the kayak this is real important to point out as well you, you see the rear bulkhead is back here well usually on a touring kayak the bulkhead is like right here like inches from your back so there's nowhere to store anything and this bulkhead is much farther back it's back here so you have a ton of storage behind your back. So unlike other touring kayaks, you have a heck of a lot more storage in the uh, cockpit than you do uh, with other you know, touring kayaks. You have a lot more storage in the Pacquiac. Um, it's also designed cleverly that if you fold up the bag that it comes with, say you wheel it down to the water, put it together at the water, well, what do you do with your bag? Well, it fits perfectly behind your back. So it'll take the bag, but in this case, in most of my cases, it'll take a cooler or it, it'll take something that I need uh, to have handy access to. Today I'm paddling, my PFD is the uh, NRS Chinook. Love this because of the high back and all of the pockets that it has for my phone and camera gear and batteries and you know, whatever. Um, also the Aquabound uh, Tango. Uh, carbon fiber, uh, fiberglass blade, uh, paddle. This is a dream, light as a feather. Um, Pacayac sells a very nice uh, Aquabound paddle as well. Now, throughout this video, you're gonna see uh, clips of me paddling it at other destinations. And that's just to give you um, you know, a good look at what the kayak looks like when it's been being paddled. Uh, so I don't want you looking at this video saying, hey, he's at Clearwater, uh, Dunedin, uh, but that's clearly not Clearwater and Dunedin in the video. So there are gonna be some video clips that are from other areas, but I think it's important to show how the kayak um, 
you know operates and how it handles and what it looks like out in the water which it's beautiful I love the upswept bow that it has and uh, it gives it a very you know a very sea kayak look a very touring kayak look it cuts through the water very nicely and I don't notice any difference in terms of uh, speed and handleability with this kayak compared to um, other touring kayaks that I have owned. Right now I'm cutting across the channel with a, a pretty fast incoming tide coming in. And, uh, and I'm able to keep a straight path with just the tracking tines, uh, chines that are, or the tracking. I'm able to keep a straight path with the uh, tracking capabilities of this kayak. Don't really feel like I need to have a rudder, but it's something that you certainly can get uh, because it is uh, rudder ready. Okay, earlier when I was talking to you about all the different pieces, the six different pieces with the returned edges on, you know, that the returned plastic edges that wrap all the way around the, uh, the hall pieces, the six different pieces, well, that imparts real rigidity into the hull of the boat, which I think is important. It, it, it makes it a very stiff boat and makes it handle very well. Um, my last two touring kayaks were 14-footers, uh, Jackson Journey kayaks. I loved them. Um, and, and, uh, and this is common in, in other touring kayaks that I've been in that are, that are high-density polyethylene plastic kayaks is you know when you get into some chop and some waves the floor seems to be just a little bit jello-y which me which is because it's just one solid piece of plastic coming from the bow all the way to the stern the back of the boat so with the pack yak where you have the joining sections you know one two three four five sections because those edges are returned all the way around, that imparts a lot of rigidity into the hull. Uh, yesterday, when I was out in some pretty good chop, I felt no jello in the boat. It felt very stiff and very responsive. And I, I really appreciate that. I like that in this Pakiak. Now, while we're making some comparisons to other touring kayaks, um, the, uh, I want to talk about the cockpit. The cockpit opening, the aperture of the opening of the cockpit is 18 inches by 35 and a half inches wide. And I tell you, that is huge. Um, you know, with my old, with my old touring kayak, um, I would, you know, be scraping my shins trying to get them up in the front. And once I was in, it was comfortable. But getting in and out was a bear sometimes with these long legs. And, you know, with this kayak, you know, if I just want to stop and kind of tilt my legs up a little bit and uh, get a little bit different uh, vantage point or even stick my legs out and recline a little bit, I can do that no problem in, in the Pakiak. So a very big cockpit. And uh, again, don't forget about that about 16 inch deep storage that you have behind your back, um, back to the back bulkhead. And that makes this the roomiest cockpit in any touring kayak that I have ever been in. Now, as far as spray skirts go, uh, you can put a spray skirt on this no problem. Pakayak sells a spray skirt perfectly designed and made for this kayak. And, uh, and, and you can get them from other spray skirt manufacturers as well, but uh, uh, the important thing to know is a spray skirt does go on this and Pakayak makes it very easy for you to get one. Um, I've never rolled a kayak. That's on my list to do. That's on my bucket list because I think it's important to know how to do. And uh, I, you know, I tell you, I'm going to start doing that. I'm going I'm to learn how to roll. But I've seen videos online, uh, you can roll the Pakayak and I've seen people do it with no problem. Boy, I'm literally going through inches of water. It's like when I touch my paddle on the, the ground, uh, about the top third of the paddle sticks out of the water. But uh, gliding over it, no problem. You know, with the kayak being, with the Pakayak being 14 foot 2 inches, it's a really good length for a touring kayak. You know, it's not going to be your 16 or 17 foot model that you tour for days in. But it, 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 it gives enough length to where you get a good uh, glide ratio per stroke. Uh, it's very efficient. And, uh, you know, the haul, this boat will hold 300 pounds. 
So if you want to load it up with camping gear for a couple days and head down a coast or head out to some islands on a lake, you can do it with this kayak no problem. And if it gets a little choppy, just put your spray skirt on and you're sealed. You got sealed bulkheads and you have a sealed cockpit and that's the ultimate in safety. Now many of you are asking, Kayak Cliff, how much is it? And in your opinion, is it worth it? Um, well, the price uh, of the Pacayac is $2,000. And that comes with the wheeled storage bag, you know, the seat, the hatch cover. I mean, it comes with everything that I showed you in the review. Um, in my opinion, yes, it does uh, make sense to purchase this kayak if you're interested in a touring kayak. Now, the benefits with this boat, huge benefits are, think of the cost of a roof rack that you need to get, like a Yakima or a Thule roof rack that you would need to get for your vehicle. Think of lifting up that kayak up to the roof rack, all the hassles of doing that, then having to stand on a bucket or take a little ladder with you so you can get up there and strap it into place. And then if you're traveling, like I have done in the past with roof stored kayaks, um, you're wondering while you're sleeping in that hotel at night, ah, is somebody messing with my kayak? Um, then you have the, you know, with a roof rack, your miles per gallon with high gas prices now, your miles per gallon are diminished, sometimes up to three, four miles per gallon, depending on how your roof rack is situated. So um, just that point alone is huge. And that's, you know, that's one of the reasons I went to kayaks that are, uh, you know, inflatable, foldable, packable, and stackable. Uh, because they can go in my vehicle and uh, I don't have to worry about them being stolen. Uh, heck, if I want to, I could reel, wheel them up into a hotel room when I'm traveling, but uh, I don't ever do that. I just keep the vehicle locked and keep them out of sight and keep them covered perfectly uh, secure. So that is huge for me. Uh, the other thing is storage. What do you do with your kayak when you're not using it? Do you have some pulley system and hoist it up to the roof in your garage? Do you have to build custom racks in your garage to store them? How much wall space is that taking up? Uh, in my case, when I had two storage two, when I had two full-size um, touring kayaks, I built a 20-foot shed on the side of the house. Now that shed gets used for other things, but boy, the kayaks took up a lot of space. Now they're gone and I can put other things in that shed. So storage is huge. You know, you could store it in an unused bedroom in your house. You could store it in a storage facility, in your garage. Heck, if you got a hatchback or a vehicle and you just want to spontaneously go out and paddle, just store it in your vehicle. And if it's a nice day and you're at work and, oh boy, on the way home from work, I could kayak because it's summer and it doesn't get dark till nine o'clock, hop in your vehicle, drive to the nearest paddling destination, hop in and you're paddling. Uh, there's no forethought involved. Now the third big key takeaway or benefit with this kayak is that you can take it anywhere. Like I just mentioned, keep it in your vehicle and have it with you anywhere you go. But uh, if you're an RVer, you know, you can slide two of these underneath your cargo bay or up inside the RV. They're perfect. Uh, also, um, you know, the wheeled bag and even if you get the bigger wheels for uneven surfaces, uh, that pack a yak you know, sell separately, um, take them to an airport. It, they're 50, the, the whole kayak is 58 pounds, so you can check it on an airplane, no problem. And because it's hard plastic, I mean, it, this is durable. There's nothing that the, uh, the baggage attendants are gonna do to, to destroy your kayak. Just check it to your destination. And when you get there, you don't have to rent a kayak. Uh, you have your paddle, you have your kayak, and you're comfortable to go out and explore wherever you are. Thank you for coming with me on the review of this pack of yak I was really excited to get it and also excited to put miles on it and give you a review of what I truly think about this boat. It's an awesome boat. It really is. Um, if you're interested in looking, learning more, my affiliate link for this kayak is in the description box. And if you do purchase, I appreciate you using my affiliate link. It doesn't cost you anything extra. All it does is it gets me a little bit back to Kayak Cliff to support my YouTube channel, uh, the destinations that we go to, all the gear that I need to buy, uh, camera gear, new paddles, you know, PFDs, 
there's a lot. And when you go on a camping trip and things like that, just that little extra that we get back helps support the channel and producing videos like this for you. So, hey, again, thank you for coming with me on this review slash miniature adventure uh, out here in the St. Joseph Sound in Dunedin, Florida, uh, on the banks of Caladesi Island. I appreciate you coming with me. Again, check out my affiliate links, all my other products that I use and love are gonna be in that, in that description box as well. Appreciate you coming. Um, hope to see you out on the water. If you ever see me out there, approach me. Come up to me, I love to talk to viewers and I have, usually have stickers I can give you. So um, anyway, safe adventuring out there. Kayak cliff out, God bless.